that's the caldera of a volcano, like this Yellowstone thing. We thought it was just this crazy place with hot springs. Like, no, that's a super volcano that is a continent killer. Strange occurrences are underway at Yellowstone National Park, prompting concern among scientists. When it hits, first of all, very few people survive and everything goes to shit. The massive supervolcano located there is showing unusual signs, including the slow swelling of the ground into a dome shape. Yellowstone Lake's water levels are fluctuating unpredictably, and a large 300-foot crack has suddenly appeared in the earth nearby. These anomalies have experts on edge, raising questions about whether they signal the awakening of Yellowstone's dormant supervolcano. After decades of dormancy, fears are mounting that this sleeping giant may be nearing a catastrophic eruption. Join us as we delve into the disturbing signs pointing towards the potential eruption of Yellowstone. Number one, a supervolcano brewing beneath our feet. It all started with a casual observation, the kind of thing that scientists live for, a tiny clue hiding in plain sight just waiting to be discovered. But this particular discovery would send shockwaves through the scientific community and beyond, awakening fears about one of nature's most formidable forces, the Yellowstone supervolcano. Our story begins in the heart of Yellowstone National Park, a place renowned for its otherworldly beauty and geological wonders. For years, visitors had marveled at the park's view of hot springs, bubbling mud pots, and Old Faithful's legendary water shows. Little did they know that beneath this serene show lay a sleeping giant, a continental killer with the power to release unimaginable devastation. Yellowstone isn't just any old volcanic park. It's the resting place of a bona fide supervolcano, one of the world's largest and most petrifying. And like any slumbering enormity, it has a habit of stirring and reminding us mere mortals of its colossal energy. Let's talk about the first tremors of alarm. Joe Rogan, the frank and fearless commentator, sounded the first alarm bells during one of his trademark No Holds Barred podcasts. His voice carried a sense of urgency as he talked about the geological puzzle that had been slowly unfolding beneath Yellowstone's quiet surface. Rogan declared that the Yellowstone supervolcano is a caldera volcano, his words cutting through the casual banter like a seismic jolt. They didn't realize how big it was until the 2000s when satellite imagery revealed the shocking truth. It's not just a crazy place with hot springs. It's a continent killer. Somewhere in like the 2000s, I think it was, they did satellite imagery and they realized, oh my God. Rogan's stark warnings echoed far beyond his studio walls, resonating through the scientific community like a wake-up call from nature itself. Something strange was afoot in that iconic national park, something that could potentially rewrite our understanding of volcanic behavior and the risks we face from these sleeping titans. In the middle of this unfolding drama lay a weird and unexpected discovery, a massive, dome-shaped uplift, steadily expanding with each passing day. It was as if the very ground beneath Yellowstone was taking deep, heaving breaths, slowly swelling outward in a display of geological defiance. But this unsettling revelation was just the beginning. The once peaceful waters of Yellowstone Lake, that shining oasis of serenity, had started behaving in utterly baffling ways. Their levels shifted and tilted like the entire basin was engaged in a slow, awkward seesaw routine. Then, as if to emphasize the threatening nature of the situation, a huge crack violently split the earth open near hidden falls in the neighboring Grand Teton National Park. This wasn't just any ordinary crack. It was a gaping mouth in the rock face, stretching over 300 feet long and standing a towering 100 feet high. It was as if the very bones of the earth were fracturing under some unseen, unyielding force. For the scientific community, these bizarre occurrences weren't just oddities to be catalogued and studied. They were revelations, tantalizing peaks behind the curtain of one of nature's grandest spectacles. Yellowstone has a legacy and a rich and rugged history. Millions of years ago, this region was the stage for some of the most mind-blowing volcanic fireworks the world has ever seen. Three times in its distant past, the Yellowstone supervolcano unleashed explosive eruptions so massive and utterly fierce 
that they left indelible scars upon the face of our planet. The most recent of these epic blowouts, the one that gave birth to the vast Yellowstone caldera itself, occurred around 631,000 years ago. It was a real showstopper, an eruption so violently magnificent that it belched out over 240 cubic miles of volcanic material, blanketing much of what is now North America in a thick, choking blanket of ash. But as the smoke finally cleared from that apocalyptic event, the story took an unexpected turn. From the bowels of that emptied magma chamber, new life began to stir. Like a battered prize fighter shaking off the cobwebs, the underground forces beneath Yellowstone started to regroup, refilling that hole with a slow, relentless upwelling of molten rock. As the magma chamber gradually replenished itself, something miraculous and utterly amazing happened. The birth of the resurrected domes. It was an expansive, roiling sea of molten rock flooding upwards like a huge, underground balloon, inflating with each passing century. As the pressure built, that liquid fury found the path of least resistance, pushing outwards and deforming the very crust of the earth into massive, dome-shaped uplifts. The dignitaries of this geological sideshow are the Sour Creek Dome and the Mallard Lake Dome, these domes aren't just modest little hillocks. Each one stretches over 10 kilometers wide and rises hundreds of meters above the surrounding caldera floor. They're like nature's version of hulking, volcanic muscles, flexed in an endless display of raw, ancient power. The Sour Creek Dome is a big old mound full of cracks and bumps formed by strong forces under the ground. It looks rough and worn out, like the face of a very old sailor. The Mallard Lake Dome is also impressive. About 170,000 years ago, it went through a big change when a lot of lava erupted from it. It was like the dome had a fresh layer of rock added to it, making it even more imposing. These domes aren't just there. They're part of a bigger story that keeps changing. They're reminders of the Yellowstone supervolcano's history and the powerful forces still active below us. For many years, scientists have been closely watching Yellowstone paying attention to every little movement in the ground, almost like checking the pulse of a sleeping giant. Time after time, this dormant giant has shown hints of the powerful forces lurking beneath its surface. Let's go back to 1923. During that year, a detailed study of ground levels in Yellowstone revealed something incredible. The center of the caldera had risen by more than 28 inches since the last measurements. It was as if the whole area was slowly swelling, expanding faster than most plants grow. But this wasn't just a one-time thing. For over 60 years, from 1923 to 1985, scientists saw a continuous rise in the ground across the caldera. It was like the ground was steadily getting higher. But then, in 1985, things changed unexpectedly. A series of earthquakes started near the northwest edge of the caldera, and suddenly, the rising movement stopped. Instead, the ground began to sink back down, reversing its previous upward trend. What caused this shift? Scientists believed it was because of the buildup of fluids like magma and very hot steam underneath the surface. When this pressure found a way out, possibly through cracks underground, the ground deflated, like air slowly escaping from a balloon. If those early uplift events were nature's way of clearing its throat, then the seismic rumblings that followed were the full-throated roar of a beast impatiently flexing its might. From the mid-1990s onwards, the behavior of the Yellowstone caldera took an even more mysterious turn. In Yellowstone's huge volcanic crater, the ground started acting strangely, going up and down like a wild dance. Some parts bulged up slowly, while others sank like they were tired. It seemed like the whole area was moving in a synchronized rhythm of rising and falling. But what caught scientists' attention the most was a new bulge that appeared. It was rising faster than anything they'd seen before, almost like it was eager to be noticed. As if this unpredictable dance wasn't enough, scientists noticed something unsettling. The strange ground movement seemed to match up with the earthquakes that often shook Yellowstone. It was clear that these tremors weren't just random events. They were connected to the powerful forces beneath the surface. 
The movement of magma and the shifting of tectonic plates deep below were working together to change the shape of the caldera in a dynamic and unpredictable way. It was like witnessing a thrilling geological story play out right before our eyes. With each new change in the ground showing us another part of Yellowstone's turbulent and ever-changing tale. Imagine if Yellowstone erupts tomorrow. Every breath will be a struggle, and the sun will be blocked out by a thick, toxic veil. This is the reality of a Yellowstone eruption. But what would it be like if this apocalyptic scenario happened? Number 2. What if the Yellowstone volcano erupted tomorrow? Right now, a ticking time bomb lurking beneath the peaceful land of the United States. The Yellowstone volcano, one of the world's largest supervolcanoes, is gearing up to explode. And when it does, the results will be nothing short of devastating. Imagine yourself as a resident of a small town in Wyoming, blissfully unaware of the impending doom. You wake up one morning stretching and yawning, ready to start another routine day. But little do you know, deep underground, the earth is rumbling and a massive force is brewing. Suddenly the ground starts to tremble violently and you hear a deafening roar that shakes the very foundations of your home. You rush outside, only to be greeted by a sight straight out of a horror movie. Massive blankets of ash and smoke billowing into the sky, blotting out the sun. This is no ordinary volcanic eruption. This is a super volcano, and Yellowstone has just awoken from its slumber. As the ash starts raining down, you realize that this is no ordinary ash. These are tiny, scorching particles of jagged rock capable of tearing through your lungs like shards of glass. You try to run, but the air is thick and suffocating, and every breath feels like swallowing cement. Within a matter of hours, the once pristine area is transformed into a hellish wasteland, with buildings collapsing and ash piling up like snowdrifts. And this is just the beginning. As the days pass, the ash continues to spread, blanketing the entire United States and Canada in a thick, toxic veil. Tens of millions of people within a thousand kilometer radius of the eruption are deceased, their lungs filled with the deadly mixture of ash and air. But the devastation doesn't stop there. Even those living on the East Coast are not spared. As a thin layer of ash covers their cities, threatening to choke the remaining survivors, as if that weren't enough, the ash lingering in the atmosphere starts to block out the sun, causing a dramatic drop in global temperatures. The world plunges into a decade-long winter, with crops failing, water supplies dwindling, and entire ecosystems collapsing. Those who survive the initial eruption are left to face a harsh, unforgiving reality, a world where every breath is a struggle and every day is a battle for survival. Amidst the chaos and despair, you find yourself huddled in a makeshift shelter, surrounded by other survivors. You exchange stories of the horror you've witnessed, the loved ones you've lost, and the dreams that have been shattered. And through it all, you cling to the hope that one day, the ash will clear, the sun will shine again, and the world will heal from the wounds inflicted by the Yellowstone eruption. While the likelihood of such a catastrophic event occurring in our lifetime is slim, the narrative serves as a stark reminder of the power of nature and the fragility of our existence. It's a cautionary tale, urging us to appreciate the beauty of our world and to cherish every moment, for we never know when it might all be taken away. Yellowstone is no ordinary park. It's home to the biggest volcanic system in North America, a supervolcano with a history of explosive eruptions that have left indelible scars on our planet. Let's explore this geological marvel. Number 3. The Biggest Volcanic System in North America Yellowstone National Park is not your typical park with just grass and benches. It's special. Back in 1872, the U.S. Congress made a law to protect it, and the president at the time, Ulysses S. Grant, signed it. People from all over the world love this park because of its cool animals and hot springs. One of the most famous attractions is the Old Faithful Geyser. Yellowstone is huge, covering an area as big as 3,468.4 square miles. It has all kinds of things like lakes, canyons, rivers, and mountains. One standout feature is Yellowstone Lake, which is one of the biggest lakes up high in North America. 
It's sitting right on top of a supervolcano called the Yellowstone Caldera. The Yellowstone Caldera is the biggest volcanic system in North America. And globally, it's only matched by the Lake Toba Caldera in Sumatra. People call it a supervolcano because it was created by really huge and powerful explosions. More than half of the world's geysers and hot springs are in Yellowstone, all because of the volcanic activity happening there. The land in Yellowstone is mostly covered by lava flows and rocks from past volcanic eruptions. People have been keeping a close eye on this volcano since 1923. But recently, the hot liquid rock inside the earth has been raising the ground by about 10 inches. After a while, this rise slowed down, suggesting that the magma was getting cooler and turning into solid rock. This was like an early sign to scientists who watch over this sleeping giant volcano that it might be getting ready to wake up. To figure out what might happen and take preventive measures ahead of this eruption, scientists are looking at the last three big explosions it had. All three times, it caused huge and powerful events. Even the most recent one, which was more than 600,000 years ago, left big marks all over Yellowstone National Park. The first big explosion at Yellowstone was called the Huckleberry Ridge Eruption, and it took place around 2.1 million years ago, producing 2,500 times more ash than the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. It was this eruption that made the Island Park Caldera, which is partly in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, and stretches into Idaho in an area called Island Park. The Island Park Caldera is one of the biggest volcanic craters globally, measuring about 80 by 65 kilometers. It created a layer of ash, known as the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff, extending from Southern California to the Mississippi River. Inside the Island Park Caldera, there's a smaller and younger crater called the Henry's Fork Caldera, which erupted 1.3 million years ago, shaping the Mesa Falls Tuff. While both craters share a rim on their west side, the older Island Park Caldera is much larger and stretches into Yellowstone National Park. People sometimes call it the first phase Yellowstone Caldera or the Huckleberry Ridge Caldera. During this eruption, an enormous amount of stuff like volcanic ash, gases, and magma shot out, reaching a whopping 580 cubic miles. This eruption holds the record as the largest one ever seen in the history of Yellowstone National Park and the whole of North America. However, there are speculations that the eruption probably took place in three separate phases spread out over decades. The second eruption, known as the Mesa Falls Tuf, occurred about 1.3 million years ago. It created Henry's Fork Caldera, situated in eastern Idaho's Island Park area, west of Yellowstone National Park. This eruption released over 280 cubic kilometers of ash, spreading across Wyoming and much of Colorado, Nebraska, and Kansas. When you compare the Henry's Fork Caldera to the Island Park Caldera, the Henry's Fork Caldera is significantly smaller. The Island Park Caldera, on the other hand, is much larger and oval, stretching well into Yellowstone Park. Despite being smaller, the Henry's Fork Caldera is still substantial, measuring 18 miles in length and 23 miles in width. Its curved rim is easily seen from various spots in the Island Park area. Among the various calderas created by the Yellowstone hotspot, Henry's Fork Caldera is the only one presently visible, a part of a series of supervolcanoes and calderas that shaped the Snake River Plain. The most recent, is the third major eruption in Yellowstone's history. The Lava Creek eruption happened approximately 630,000 years ago and resulted in the creation of the Yellowstone Caldera. This eruption is seen as the most significant event in Yellowstone's third cycle of volcanic activity. It spread over an area of more than 7,500 square kilometers and focused on the caldera. Its magma volume is estimated to be about 1,000 cubic kilometers. Even though it didn't release as much material as the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, it still covered a large area. In addition to the magma and other volcanic stuff, a huge amount of volcanic ash and gas was forcefully thrown out. The dense, tough formation created by this eruption 
is visible at different spots in Yellowstone National Park, such as Tough Cliff along the Gibbon River, Virginia Cascade, and along U.S. Highway 20. Sadly, the harmful effects of this eruption weren't limited to just Yellowstone National Park. The magma and volcanic debris spread over most of the United States. Surprisingly, some of the debris reached as far as Louisiana, which is thousands of miles away from Wyoming. In the past, eruptions of the Yellowstone supervolcano unleashed massive amounts of volcanic ash, gas, magma, and other debris that blanketed most of the continental U.S. Some of this material has even been discovered as far away as Louisiana. After that, the land collapsed and formed a hole now known as the Yellowstone Caldera, Helens pulling in trees, mountains, and everything else in its surroundings. Scientists emphasize that the last Yellowstone eruption was a staggering 1,000 times more powerful than the infamous 1980 Mount Helens eruption, which claimed 56 lives and countless animals and destroyed large land areas in Washington and Oregon. When Yellowstone erupted, a dangerous mix of hot ash, melted rock, and deadly gases shot up high into the sky. This event likely covered about a third of the continent in total darkness. Fast flows of hot, dry rock and gases rushed across the area quickly, covering or breaking everything in their path. The melted rock known as magma burned the once beautiful land for many kilometers. To date, we can still see signs of this terrible thing happening in Yellowstone. The Yellowstone caldera, which is like a big crater, is 50 kilometers wide and 70 kilometers long. Lately, there have been more earthquakes in Yellowstone, between 1,000 and 3,000 each year. These quakes tell scientists about the magma under the ground. There's a magma lake below the surface called the magma chamber. The quakes show if more magma is going into this chamber. It's hard to say for sure what these quakes mean for Yellowstone. People can't predict what the volcano will do next, but they study its past to understand it better. Geologists have been closely monitoring the height of the Yellowstone Plateau, which is rising at a rate of as much as 150 millimeters per year. This information helps them understand changes in the pressure of the magma chamber indirectly. What if we could prevent the next Yellowstone super eruption? NASA scientists have proposed a daring plan to cool the volcano down, but at a staggering cost. Let's find out if this audacious idea could save the world. Number 4. NASA's $3.50 billion idea to save Earth from a supervolcano apocalypse. The Yellowstone is a colossal force of nature, larger than the entire state of Rhode Island, and powerful enough to wreak havoc on a global scale. Scientists had been closely monitoring this geological enormity, well aware of the potential devastation it could unleash. If the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, the consequences would be nothing short of catastrophic. Imagine a tower of ash shooting miles into the sky, dwarfing even the mighty Mount Everest. The nearby cities would be buried under meters of suffocating ash, while massive clouds would block out the sun for decades, plunging the world into a prolonged winter. According to the United Nations, an eruption of this magnitude would cripple agriculture worldwide, leading to a global food shortage in just over two months. It was a scenario straight out of an apocalyptic movie, and the thought sent shivers down the spines of those who understood the true power of this slumbering giant. But Yellowstone's history revealed that such explosive events were not mere fiction. The supervolcano had erupted three times in the past 2.1 million years, approximately once every 600,000 years. And the last time it had unleashed its fury? A staggering 600,000 years ago, leaving the world to wonder when the next eruption might occur. Despite the sensational headlines and doomsday predictions, the scientists remained calm. Their calculations suggested that another super-eruption was unlikely to happen for at least a few million years, giving humanity a much-needed space to rest. But what if they could go a step further and ensure that Yellowstone never erupted again? It was this audacious idea that captured the imagination of a team of scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in 2015. They planned to cool the volcano down by attacking the source of its heat and power. Each year, 
Yellowstone produced enough heat to power six industrial power plants, while about 60 to 70 percent of that heat escapes through hot springs and geysers like the famous Old Faithful. The rest remain trapped underground, building up pressure within the supervolcano's magma chambers. The scientists proposed a daring solution. Drill a series of deep wells around the perimeter of the supervolcano, some reaching up to 10 kilometers below the surface. These wells would pump cold water into the depths, gradually cooling a ring of rock surrounding the magma chamber, much like how coolant in a car carries heat away from its engine. But this wasn't just a one-way operation. The heated water, reaching temperatures of around 340 degrees Celsius, would be looped back through the wells and used to drive electric generators. In essence, the plan would transform Yellowstone into a massive geothermal power station, capable of providing energy to the surrounding area for tens of thousands of years, ultimately paying for itself in the end. The scientists were confident that, in theory, this ambitious scheme could work. However, the reality of implementing such a plan was fraught with challenges and risks. For starters, they would need to extract an astonishing 20 gigawatts of energy to cool the volcano down to a safe temperature, a process that would take an estimated 16,000 years from start to finish. And the price tag is a huge $3.46 billion, about 20% of NASA's annual budget. Even worse, the act of cooling the rock could potentially create fractures near the magma chamber, triggering the very super-eruption they were trying to prevent in the first place. It was a delicate dance with nature, and one misstep could spell disaster. Fortunately for the world, the slumbering giant beneath Yellowstone showed no signs of waking anytime soon. The supervolcano remained in a deep sleep, giving scientists the luxury of time to continue monitoring and studying this geological marvel. While the idea of cooling Yellowstone's supervolcano might seem like a bold and ambitious endeavor, it serves as a testament to human ingenuity and our relentless pursuit of solutions, even in the face of nature's most powerful forces. For now, the sleeping giant rests, but the world stands ready, ever vigilant, to confront any potential awakening with the full force of scientific knowledge and technological innovation. While the $3.46 billion price tag for cooling Yellowstone's supervolcano seemed astronomical, the scientists knew it was a small price to pay when weighed against the potential catastrophe an eruption would unleash. Think about it this way. If this supervolcano erupts, we're looking at a global crisis that could impact over 7 billion people worldwide. $3.46 billion to potentially save that many lives? That's less than a dollar for every two people on the planet. The comparison was sobering. Suddenly, the cost didn't seem so exorbitant when measured against the value of human life and the preservation of civilization as we know it. The team understood that convincing the world's governments and organizations to fund such an ambitious project would be an uphill battle. But they were armed with compelling data and a steadfast belief in the importance of their mission. We're not just talking about protecting the United States or even North America. A Yellowstone eruption would have global ramifications, disrupting food supplies, triggering climate changes, and potentially leading to mass migrations and conflicts over resources. Their voices carried a sense of urgency, driven by the knowledge that the longer humanity waited, the closer the slumbering giant inched toward its next awakening. The time to act was now before it was too late. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more interesting videos.